Oh, yay. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Good, Thank good, you so good. For being here. No um, problem. Good have me. Yeah, of course. Um, I know we planned this several weeks ago. So I, I want to meet you where you are today and just start with asking, you know, how are you and how's your heart and how's your energy and, you know, how are you coping with what's going on right now? Um, I'm actually feeling great. I'm blessed to be alive. Um, if it's not one thing, it's the, it's the next, you know, first we had COVID and the whole quarantine and then, you know, the quarantine gets somewhat lifted off um, somewhat. And then, you know, we had the, you know, tragic passing um, of Mr. Floyd and, um, you know, just dealing with all all the um, kind of aftermath through all that. But I can say that I'm great, despite all of that. That's good. I'm really glad to hear that. That's where you're at. Um, without any kind of like holding you to any kind of expectation, is there anything that you want to share using this platform this morning to speak to um, SoulSide's community as well as yours in that regard at all? Um, only thing I would honestly just say is to um, just learn how to just love one another, you know, despite the emotional circumstances. Emotional circumstances can bring off different reactions and they may not be consistent or persistent all the time. I just wanted to know that, I just want everybody to know that um, it's it's okay to love one another and it's okay to love one another with any guilt, you know, anybody having to, you know, feel any guilt um, to support, um, to support anybody, you know, you should just be supporting people because of who they are, if their services um, can match what your needs are and don't just do anything just out of, uh, of guilt. You know, do it from your heart, and that yeah. becomes every that that becomes more authentic than everything. Because once you do something from the heart, then uh, you won't have to worry about doing things out of emotions because emotions can change every day. You know, depending on how we wake up, you know, we're in a different emotion, and then you can react differently the entire day from that. So, only thing that I just wanted to share is that if you're going to support, you want to support any say black owned businesses, just make sure that you're doing it from the heart, not just as a fad, not as a trend, or not out of guilt or any emotional uprise. If you've been doing it, you know, kudos. If you're going to start doing it, and kudos to you. But just make sure you stay persistent in that and don't just react off of emotion or a trend. That's very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think that speaks a lot to both to what we both do also in, ter in terms of coming from a centered, grounded, embodied kind of place, like making sure that our, our bodies are well, our nervous systems are well to hold love and compassion or train yourself to come into love and compassion and act from that place rather than the emotional thing that changes all the time or emotions are never final, emotions can lie to you, um, all of that. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so let's just dive in. I'd love to hear, I'd love to sh have you share about, uh, your journey yourself, what you do here in Peoria. So everyone can kind of hear what's, what's going on in your world. All right. In, uh, 2015, I launched my blog, christianswaitsuccess.net to answer the question of how I lost 187 pounds in 10 months. Um, it helped me kind of find myself a little bit more through, uh, written blog posts through um, videos. Um, a lot of people would ask me about, you know, what did I eat during that time? What did I, um, what kind of workout routines? And the best way I could kind of <laughs> always explain it, send somebody a YouTube link, was a YouTube link to my video that um, consisted of meal prep videos or um, um, or exercise routines, what so have you. And from there, things progressed and I uh, became a personal trainer and then started uh, personal training. I still, I'm still currently a personal trainer here in Peoria, Illinois. Um, I train from my home or I train at uh, Peoria's uh, Gold's Gym out of Grand Prairie. And even though, you know, we had this COVID situation, I found, uh, 
that to be challenging because, you know, I was without, you know, a lot of my clients for the time being. So I missed that, that energy and that, that feel that you get, um, you know, from that, from that one-on-one, but, you know, I can't say that I was, was blessed and I am blessed, um, despite everything that's going on right now and just still just having fun, just constantly learning, um, constantly evolving and, um, you know, just my goal is just to get people started, you know, at the basis and the basics of um, personal training or physical training. Some people have um, live a, you know, very stagnant life or where a sedentary life, I'm sorry, a sedentary life where they're sitting, sitting down at a cubicle um, or just working, you know, and they just want to be able to feel better. And the way you feel better is by just starting to move, you know, one foot forward. That's my mentality. And when I'm training is just put one foot forward, you know, I tell all my clients, I don't, I don't really care about speed or how you do it. Just, just start, just start. And then from there, we can always work on intensity. We can work on speed and go with it from there. But I know that, um, you know, just in this day and age, it's very important that, you know, everybody stays in health and in good health and boost their immune system to make sure they give themselves a fighting chance, you know, despite everything that's going on out there. Totally. Yeah. Um, one thing I thought of when you were talking is you said you launched your blog. You have a podcast too, right? Correct. 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 Are you always like a techie person? Was it easy for you to just like get a, get your blog and start a website and start a podcast and start your YouTube videos of your cooking? Was it, was that part of your life already? Or was it all something you learned on the, on the spot to, to create a business based on your passion? Um, to answer the question, no, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't easy. Um, you know, being, um, at that time when, you know, I started, it was more like, you know, you're happy to express yourself. You're happy to, you know, say what's going on or share to, uh, to the world. And then you're trying to find the easiest ways to, to do it, you know, whether it's uploading videos to each social network and then that becomes daunting. And then you're trying to find a way to compress all of that and make everything more efficient because you still have to live your regular life. Um, and I could go on and on about social media tactics and everything like that, but everything just learning all in the way, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of learn out of the necessity to survive in um, sharing your content. And everything's trial and error. Um, a lot of things that I do still aren't right. Some things are. And I'm... Um, I've been told I'm a perfectionist, but I don't really see it like that. I just want to make sure that what if, whenever I do, I want to make sure it's it's done right to the best of my ability. And if it's if it's not, um, I have no problem um, getting help and accept <laughs> and and just trying and trying to learn. I'm constantly trying to learn. I'm constantly listening to other podcasts, uh, whether it's podcasts on how to improve on personal training coaching or personal um, or just as far as business. Um, or how to create better content, how to get people engaged the right way, what are the new trends on social media or what may have you. So I'm constantly learning one way or another. Yeah, same. I feel like that's the piece that people forget about or don't understand. Like we get to do what we love, but it's a, it's a more than a full-time job to make sure we're learning how to even do it. Right. <laughs> how to make that our because full-time no real blueprint there's there's no blueprint there's footprints in front of you but they may be bigger or smaller than yours so um there's no routine there's no structure but you have to create that structure and yeah. uh, again it's trial and error but it's still fun because the next day it's like okay so i'm going to maintain this day um along with just actually just living your 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 normal life just as a as a human as a brother as a as a cousin as a, um, you know, as a businessman, everything, everything all in one. So you're just trying to figure, figure all that out all at the same time. And, you know, you got 24 hours in the day, maybe four or six of them I spend sleeping <laughs> and then everything, else, you know, waking up at the crack of dawn and just. Uh, you know, I'm jealous. <laughs> I have more sleep than that. Um, wait, you said you're a perfectionist and I, maybe you're not into this, but I'm really curious and interested in star signs. Would you tell us your birthday? Uh, 12, 15, 81. So December 15th, 1981. I think that's Capricorn. 
correct me if I'm wrong, viewers. It might be Sagittarius. Do you know? Yes, I think they changed something or whatever not too long ago, but hey, I believe in Sagittarius. Sagittarius still? Okay, interesting. We're at, last night's full moon was in Sagittarius. I don't know if you knew oh, that. Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, Sagittarius is like the, the seeker, the wanderer of the zodiac. Always, so it makes sense that you're like always optimistic, always shooting for the next step. Yeah. Yeah. You, but also, you 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 have to be positive um and just look at just look at everything you know there's two sides to a coin but it's one coin just in general so it brings everything into a better perspective far as for me because you can't always go off of what everyone says all the time based off of their experience and their opportunity of whatever uh situation that you're asking about there's always a different way there's always a different perspective and just learning how to be more open-minded um, with that. And sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it wrong, but you know, it, it, it helps me maintain a center versus just accepting, you know, what somebody else tells me to accept um, or just leaves me open to try different things. Right, I mean, that's like the lesson of the moment right now for, for white people in particular is how to remain teachable, how to keep trying right. and then apologize when you did it wrong and do it better next time. Like it doesn't right, have to right. be. Right. The, like, acting from that place of compassion rather than guilt and just trying again and it sounds like you're kind of applying that to your business model as well correct um i want to ask you what mindfulness means to you um i think more of a type of optimistic as far as how i take it as far as just being mindful of certain things um being mindful that you may say something and you may think that oh, it's right because I said it, but I'm never considering your feelings, your emotions, how you could perceive it. And you have a right to perceive what you perceive because you, you know what you know based off of your experience and learning. And it's just being mindful about everything around you that everything is not about you. Um, everything is not about the next person in general but just to be more compassionate be more empathetic if anything i think that best way sums it up just be more empathetic towards a lot of situations um again saying things or doing things that i believe that was right because oh i said it you know so what i say is gold and i just may see things that way but there's a, it's a different shade you know there's a different different angle there's a different perspective and it keeps me open to learning you know, how to be more empathetic, how to be more understanding and just how to learn more and just being being more hesitant to pull the trigger on what I have to say all the time and just say, OK, let's think about this before I say it. You know, we live in this right now society to where, you know, we have everything at the tip of our fingertips uh, where there's information and we think that is right all the time, all the time. And necessarily that's not. And you know, if somebody doesn't agree with us, then we cancel it and we exit them out and, you know, yeah. we fired from their job and everything's like that right then and there. But be mindful that that same energy can come back to you because I totally believe in reaping and sowing and just learning how to just, again, be mindful of every situation and in, in every step. I love that. I love that your mindful, your description of mindfulness turns into action in the sense of encompassing the greater whole, which is yogic it's completely yogic that we surrender to a larger uh, understanding of the universe your car your description of karma your reaping and sowing all of that is i i love that you're including that in part of mindfulness because i think a lot of times the way i teach mindfulness or the way we talk about mindfulness in yoga is present moment awareness and noticing where your attention is which is what you're saying if your attention is um focused on what i think is right then that's a that's maybe not the the best use of mindfulness but starting with what do i feel what do i sense what's my present moment and then understanding that everyone else's is going to be different so Correct. it's not, i can't stop at mindfulness is i'm aware and i'm present and so i'm mindful it has to keep going beyond that so so is everybody else so how do we all you know interact and connect from there right 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 um do you see your clients improving or changing their ability to be mindful or their mental capacity so you work in the physical realm right like you're you're working on physical body shape for the most part but what kind of 
like mental components come into your work or what do you see your clients learning and developing in the mental realm? Uh, learning how to appreciate and love themselves even more and um, not, and learning to not be so hard on themselves for the results and goals that they want. Now that's a balance each individual has to learn for themselves. But, you know, you see, you know, clients focus on the scale, um, but that's not the only way to measure uh, success in fitness or as far as their wellness. You know, are you sleeping better? Um, are your clothes fitting better? Are you more energetic when you wake up? Do you catch yourself taking less naps since you started working out because you have more energy? And learning to uh, embrace those things versus this, I would say cultural universal, you know, standard of measurement, you know, which is the scale, you know, oh, the scale didn't drop, but it's like, okay, but are you feeling better? Is your attitude better? Are you learning to become more empathetic because you're more patient? You're not in a rush. You, they start to learn how to uh, operate in their, in their body and becoming one with their body. So that's like the main thing, more, more self-love. And once they start doing that, then everything else in regards to their goal starts falling into place. Do you think you're unique as a trainer in focusing on that kind of thing? Um, no, <laughs> because I honestly, I honestly feel like, and when I'm saying that, it's, it's, it's more far from a humble standpoint, because if I think that I'm so unique, then I don't feel like I need to improve. And so I'm constantly, you know, trying to improve. You know, sometimes, you know, when I'm working a client out, I may get too quiet and I may not uh, be in tune to how the client may take that. Um, and that's just communication. You know, I may get quiet because I'm observing, but that may be the moment where they need an extra cue point, um, you know, just social cues saying, hey, you know, um, you know, take your arms out a little bit more here, chest out here or whatever. So just more so just learning how to um, just be in the moment and being more aware and, just constantly just improving. You know, every session is different. Uh, within each session, um, you know, every every minute or every rep or just every exercise is just different. You know, we may have, you know, do three rounds of, of push-ups in a cycle, but that second round is different from the first round. So they may need something a little bit different to say to them, or they may put their hands in a different position. And that's where you as a trainer has to be more in tune and more, uh, aware and just be more observant and just know how to issue those cues out versus, you know, yelling and screaming, you know, just talk to them yeah. like regular human and then just ask them too, because yeah. what I see may not be what they feel at the same time. So once again, becoming more empathetic, becoming more mindful in that, in that situation. Yeah. And the reason I asked you is because I don't, I don't have a lot of, I don't have it any experience really with personal trainers and that's one of the reasons I wanted to connect with you because I think there is a natural intersection between wanting to diversify the way you move so a lot of yoga students also attend gyms right or are maybe looking for someone like you because there's only so much strength you can do in a yoga class it's enough for me right now but there's times and, and one like I'm kind of leaning towards getting more into things like you're doing uh, yeah. to diversify to diversify my workout um, something that yoga is missing is any kind of pull like any kind of back chamber pull we can do lots of we can strengthen our legs we can lower down in a push-up but there's nothing that we can hang on to to lift up so that's one thing that we're missing in the yoga world we, we can do a lot of, of fitness even cardio in a yoga class um, yeah. I get into like your experience doing the yoga videos soon but uh, I, I definitely have, and I think a lot of the yoga students I work with kind of have a, a fear about going into a gym setting because we are all, we have taken on a yoga practice where we're um, becoming very non-competitive. It's very like sometimes very slow paced, very internal, um, very like peaceful. And then the gym setting feels maybe sort of opposite than that. And I love what you're saying about body positivity and making sure that your wellness is stemming from those non-standard markers. That's something we talk about so much in the yoga world. So I, I asked if you're unique in that way because I, I would feel comfortable coming to you as a trainer or sending my students to you as a trainer because you're sharing so much more than I, I feel like is 
trendy or common in a gym mm -hmm. setting. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, you're right. I totally get it. And so same thing as far as with the the yoga experience is, you know, there's there's always two sides to a coin, as I was saying earlier. And when I was going through the videos, I think I went through them out of order <laughs> that you said. And I'm like, maybe I should have did the beginner. But I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm already, I'm in the middle of this already, so ain't no, ain't no turning back. But I learned more about myself from the standpoint of, yeah, I can do all the strength training and do all the squats and lunges and push-ups and pull-downs and everything like that. But, like, can I, like, sit in a just regular, like, you know, cross my legs and just let my, my knees just relax? You know, can I relax? Just period. I think that's the biggest thing. And just, you know, that was actually my first time doing yoga, experiencing it. And it was just be calm, be calm, be calm. <laughs> so just on the go, like, let's go, let's go, let's go. That's just my mentality. And so that was just a change of pace. And I'm yeah. like, so learning how to uh, center yourself, center your energy, and just relax. Learning how to stretch and, and just breathe and just take your time. And I can see myself doing that more in the future. So that can help me out just personally and just help me out um, in how I articulate exercises when I'm training someone else. Because when you're, when you're stretching and as far as for yoga, it's like, you know, you're doing like full range of motion and learning how to uh, open up those muscles and um, stretch and relax and stretch those muscles. So you can get the full, um, range of motion for that muscle group and then in turn maybe the next day or later on that day if you decide to add weight training you feel that muscle even more and you start to realize okay i wasn't you know fully extending my arm when i was doing that shoulder press now that i'm a little bit looser now hey i have a chance to um, do more full range of motion and become stronger in that area so they really complement each other yeah oh, all of that i love that so much and for context, I sent Christian three three videos. I can't yeah. send you three videos from our online virtual studio. Um, I think I sent you a beginner's video and then a a mindful, yeah, a yeah, 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 and then a mindful flow. Um, yeah, so yeah. I, 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 out of out of all of all the ones that were tough, were was the the kind of like the introduction to just you know calming your body down. So I'm just like it was just so different. You know, I'm yeah. used to watching. YouTube videos and, you know, learning and um, just watching people move, lift weights and different things like that. But the most challenging thing for me was just to calm down, you yeah. know, the stretch cool because it became a challenge. I'm like, okay, this is different for me. You know, again, I'm always trying to learn and some things were tough and I'm like, okay, I can't stretch all the way down to my toes just yet. My calves are a little tight and I'm like, okay, this is something I got to work on, you know. <laughs> Personally, my hamstrings have always been like one of the tightest muscle groups to uh, stretch out. But mm -hmm. I can say after, you know, doing your routine, and you know, my legs have never felt more, more loose. They have never felt more, just more relaxed. And so I can see myself continually to do that uh, even more just to, to help me out. And again, yeah. when I, and then later on in that day, I still did an actual leg workout. And that helped me. Because usually I'm just so tight, I can't, I can't hardly move in the way I know I should be able to. And um, when I did my leg, uh, my, weighted, my weight training prior to that, um, I had more endurance and more strength and more confidence in each actually rep and each uh, exercise that I did. So it's very, very helpful. Yeah. Nothing like the 2 a.m. hamstring. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I always try to avoid that. I always try to avoid that. But I know that just comes from just it's not, you know, being fully, fully, fully used in this in its full capacity. It has yeah. to have to take time to stretch. And in this day and age to where, again, you know, we're taking care of, you know, there's a business side and then there's your own personal side. Um, you know, we're strapped for time. You know, um, my sessions oh. are 45 minutes. And so I even train myself within that 45 minute round. Um, and I'm just kind of crunched for time, but it's like, how do I use that time more efficiently um, yeah. each and every day when I'm executing these exercises or doing my own workouts? I go through any workout that I send my clients, I've gone through myself. And since we are so, you know, under this, this clock, you know, we're always under time, under this time constraint or restraint, 
you have to learn how to use utilize that to the best of your ability. And if you don't get it right in those 45 minutes or like your session was 45 minutes, you know, there's always Lord willing the next day to where you can try again. And that has to be within. That's the optimistic side of saying, you know what, hey, I can get this. I can get this down tomorrow. Let me try that because you do feel better, you know, after you work out. And then, you know, that's what keeps you going or keeps me going um, yeah. to come back, do some more the next day. Totally. Or finding, finding for myself, finding ways to um, just to diversify throughout the week rather than feeling like right. I have to yoga five days a week or weight train five days a week, whatever. Right. I think that's that's where I'm trying to get to. That's where I'm trying to go. And it sounds like with this comment, too, is that integration of yoga and training making much more sense. I agree. Like hearing you talk about I, I have a concept, a conception of why they work together. But even hearing you talk about the range of motion in yoga that you can find, because when you're stretching at the beginning or end of a training session, it's probably pretty quick and you don't get into that really mindful aspect. Exactly. Of, exactly. Really, how do I feel? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly that's exact, exactly what it what it is. Is you know the first um, introduction to my workouts is um, is stretching, and again, being that we're in a time constraint, you know, I don't have that time that yoga allows you to get, do the full range of motion, even in, in a stretch. It's a quick stretch, it's a stretch, but um, I find myself after doing your video, um, I'm like, okay, let me spend more time stretching, and yeah. maybe that. <laughs> Doesn't isn't 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 uh, boxed into a you know an eight minute set you know maybe that needs to be a full day or forty five minutes so like you said learn how to integrate um, different exercises or you know modalities and you know okay Monday I'll do weight training Tuesday I'll do yoga and just kind of flip flop back and forth totally yeah and for and for like for my end and the people I teach there's a lot of people who are kind of working towards like these peak poses in yoga that they're kind of like the poses you always see posted in yoga magazines or whatever. We don't do much of that. It's very extreme kind of style mm -hmm. of yoga, athletic yoga. But once you are doing yoga for 10 or 15 or 20 years, you do, you do want to experience your body growing in strength and, and flexibility in, in, a, in order to reach some of those peak poses. So I think the, for us working with a trainer, working with a weight trainer, is going to get us there a lot faster and a lot safer. We're going to learn how to use our muscles a lot better than just simply yoga class. It's just a, it's just a different approach and both right. are so cool. Um, right. Yeah. I, I'm curious. So you said it was the first time you did yoga. What kind of associations did you have beforehand with yoga? What did you, what did you know <laughs> growing up and all of that? Honestly, um, I honestly didn't understand it. I don't think anyone had ever explained it. And I'm not leaving that to everyone else. Uh, I never really had an inkling to kind of look into it even more. You know, um, I kind of saw a couple of quick videos that people may, may have done. I've seen, um, watched that Netflix uh, documentary on Bik Bikram, oh, Bikram, you know, <laughs> that craziness. But honestly, that's about it. Um, but once I physically, um, you know, executed your, your exercises. I'm like, okay, so it's, it's stretching. It's, it's stretching and holding for periods of time. And I'm like, okay, so it didn't, it wasn't until I actually went through it that I grasped the, the concept, um, mm -hmm. far as from or the introductory concept. Um, but it's just stretching. And I said, okay, this is very important. So I see now I'm like, okay, let me, let me learn these poses. Let me learn these stretches. Let me, take my time. So now I do want to investigate a little bit uh, more. Like I said, you know, after I finished the routines, uh, I was walking better, you know, I felt better. I felt just more, more, more apt to actually strengthen my leg. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. There's so many extreme, uh, like that Bikram documentary is such an extreme, horrible mm -hmm. version of yoga. Yeah. And it's yeah. the same both of our, and just like I was speaking to earlier, my associations with working in a gym or working with a weight trainer is so extreme in my head. So I think taking it down a notch on both levels and just meeting people where they're at, like you're talking about. Um, right, right. What, so what could we expect if we were to work with you, if we were to train with you? Um, do you, you said the gym and you said Gold's Gym and your house. Do you ever train at other people's homes? Um, I haven't, I haven't done that just for um, liability reasons. Mm -hmm. and insurance and you just again as a business you have to make sure yourself is covered you know above all um and being that i know 
the equipment um, and how far is my style of, 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 of training. Um, you know, you, I can best fit somebody's needs as far as in that regards. I've also opened um, my business up to Zoom workouts. So even if you have, you know, equipment at home or even if you don't have equipment, you know, I can write you a customized workout um, and then, you know, have a session, kind of pretty much same structure, same format um, as I would do at home or at gym. I have my, my home gym is more of a kind of like um, kind of private, um, more type of selective type of, you know, clientele for the ones, like you said, who don't want to deal with the intimidation of a gym. Um, people are, they may not be um, as ready for a gym, um, for a commercial gym, you know, being around people, you know, self-confidence right. issues. I'm not saying that far as a not, I just really can't think of another <laughs> phrase for it at the moment. But, you know, just body conscious. Some, you know, some people, they, you know, they don't want to be around people, you know, and they feel like people are looking at them and they may, they may not. So I kind of provide a place for refuge uh, for more of a one-on-one, -on -one, more of an uh, intimate type of setting to where you can take your time and don't have to feel rushed about looking over there, somebody coming over, trying to use your equipment just because you're using it, you know, in the gym, um, you know, all that, that kind of stuff. So I go, um, you kind of invest in, in, in both ways or all three, like I said, Zoom, in-house or um, at a commercial gym. Um, so just with that being said, in regards to what can people expect, it's just patience and time. I'll listen, just make sure that, you know, you're doing the exercise to the best of your ability, not by my demand. And everybody has goals and everybody has, you know, um, you know, fitness, fitness goals or, or aspirations they want to achieve. And it's different until you actually, you know, pick up that, that dumbbell or you actually sit down and try to, you know, um, what was that? I think it was a pose. It was happy baby. <laughs> happy baby. He said, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's all fun and games when you're watching it into, but until you're actually in the heat of it, you know, it's different. And you're like, Oh, okay. You know, it's I feel that in my lower back, you know what I mean? I, okay. I'll, that 10 pound dumbbell is heavy after that 10th rep. You know what I mean? Versus just looking at something like, hey, I'm amped up and it's cool. I never want to, you know, down somebody's confidence or their excitement or their love to make themselves better. They just know that it's going to take time and it's okay. It's okay if you put the weight down for a second, but give yourself three seconds and just start back up. And um, it's a lot of fun times, a lot of, you know, just understanding and empathy. I love it. So someone else just said, yeah, the step into a gym is a difficult thing. I totally agree. And I think I would feel so much more comfortable going in with you and like having you, having you show me all the things that I need to know. Um, do you do, I, you talked about some, like, is it eight session package that you do? Can you talk a little bit about like your accessibility and how people can work with you? Is it a, can they do a one-time thing where you write a custom workout and then they just do it on their own the next time? Or is it always like a, a longer term series? Um, I have so many options. So yeah. uh, I will start with um, being that, you know, we're still in the middle of a, of a pandemic, you know, we're coming out of um, certain phases and different things like that. Um, a lot of people may not want to do one on one in person training, whether it's, um, you know, with me in my home gym or at, at the at a commercial gym. So I totally get that. Uh, so that's where technology comes in. See that what, that's what we're using right now. That's where Zoom uh, comes in. So they always have the option to do something from Zoom. Um, and from there, um, if they want to continue, then I have session packages. Um, but if they still want to kind of do something on their own, I can write them a customized workout based off of their um, based off their equipment. If they have some, if they don't, I currently have a free shelter in place body weight exercise ebook that people can download if you go to my uh, blog christiansweightsuccess.net you'll see it there once again it's a free download and everything is structured out again it's another 45 minute workout just as if you were here with me um and then from there if you want customized workouts i can write you a customized workout or as far as from there as far as in-person uh training all the prices and services and different options i'm sorry are available actually on my website christiansweightsuccess.net and people can message me from there and then from there you know i can i can customize up to their needs everybody's different so there's not just like one flat you know type of thing um 
some people start off with two sessions as far as if they want to do in person um two sessions per week for two weeks or they can do three sessions per week uh for for three weeks and that can go the same far as for within a zoom workout they just want to stick to zoom and just do things virtually i totally get it so I'm I'm pretty flexible when it comes to the needs and wants of what the client uh, may want. Cool. You got a big, you got a fan, super fan down here helping you out. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's my cousin, uh, Abray Dr. Dr. Abray McLean from San Francisco. And uh, yeah, she's, she's the one who's been helping me with the empathy and learning how to ah, just calm it. down and calm down. So I'm pretty, uh, I guess you could say I'm hyped up a lot of times. She says, calm down, look at it from this perspective. And I'm like, all right, that makes sense. So once again, just, just being able to just be open to, to learn and being open to, I wouldn't say so much criticism, but learning that you're not always right in that situation. Or you can be right, but this is how this person could have took it versus just thinking that, you know, your word is gold. You know, being a man, you know, we have our brash, <laughs> our brash attitudes a lot of times. And you just have to learn how to just just calm down. So it's kind of like yoga therapy, you know, a, a little bit, you know, just calm down, listen, and go from yeah. there. <laughs> There's always nuance. There's always nuance, and always varying perspectives, and always not always one way to be right for sure. Correct. Correct. Um, awesome. Well, that's all I, the questions I really wanted to, you know, I just wanted to hear from you and and let make sure that our community at Soulside knows of you and knows that I've been following you for a while on Soulside and seeing what you've been doing and I want everybody else to see it too. Um, and then just to share with anyone interested in your community, our yoga studio is open to all, well, it's closed right now, but it will be open to all again. And all yeah. of our classes are donation based or pay as you can. So we're a nonprofit studio. Um, and we do a, about 20 classes a week, different styles, beginners classes, all kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. Everything is pay whatever you feel comfortable paying. So we have people come and pay a dollar. We have people come and pay $30. Um, we just ask that you're honest with your income and what you can afford, and then we, we take it. So that's our model. That's what we're doing. And I'm, I'm really hopeful that we can keep in contact and maybe keep, you know, definitely, helping definitely. Each other. Most yeah. definitely. To all my followers who are, you know, watching this, um, go support, go support Soulside Healing Arts, and um, it takes it takes money to operate, and that's the truth of it. Um, just kind of a side note: one thing that I saw, kind of getting getting into this, this fitness world, um, is people have to value people have to value actually personal training and value people's times. Um, value people's business and everything just isn't free all the time. And especially if you want somebody to take their time to teach you how to become better and learn how to listen to your body. That is an actual art. Um, going through your videos and you were very descriptive, um, you know, showing poses, taking your time and being patient. That That is so much compassion, so much time, so much patience that I'm pretty sure that You've heard different stories from uh, clients to where um, the previous, you know, person or trainer that they had didn't take that time. And there's a difference. You no, know, everybody's just they don't have that. And if somebody does have that empathy to take the time out for you, they have to learn how to appreciate it. You know what I mean? Just that much more. So once again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, about learning how to give from the heart and learning how to support from the heart and not just doing it from an emotional level. Um, and just just understanding that everything isn't a fad. Um, all this stuff takes time. All this stuff takes dedication. And I just want people to, you know, in our, in our community to, to just support, just so, uh, to support one another, um, not always look for a free handout uh, because that's not what it's all about. You know, you should learn how to love and support one another because, you know, you got lights on in the back and <laughs> there's a bill associated with that. And yeah. so learning how to support through that, you know, everything doesn't go in the, in the pocket, you know, all the time. And I think that that gets, I think that, that the concentration on that is a little bit too much about, you know, where's that person's money going? Where's that, where's that going? And don't get me wrong. It is important, um, but it shouldn't be the focus. It shouldn't be the focal point. The focal point should be about each client. You know, what, what do you want from, you know, soul side hearts. What did, what did you come in there for? What did you inquire for? You know, what did you 
you know, take five, 10 minutes out of, out of her schedule today to, to ask her, you know, where's your, where's your, your goals? You know, what do you, what is it that you want to do? And actually value that. And I think once we as a whole community can collectively agree to do that and support one another, don't support out of guilt, don't support out of, um, you know, a false emotion, don't support just as a trend. You know, once you start doing that, you can value time, you know, because you want somebody to value your time. It goes both ways. And just because there are so many videos, there are so many, you know, people, you know, doing yoga or doing personal training is that that's fine that those situations and those videos are free. But if you want one-on-one, -on -one, you want somebody to take their time with you as an individual is that you, you should support and, that person has a family, that person has, that person has different people. They're trying to make sure um, gets paid and, uh, and employ and take care of. And that's, and that's so important. So once we just do that as a community, as a whole, then you start seeing more of um, more love in the community. More, more love and more abundance. And it's karmic. Like you said, it's karmic. You, you reap what you sow. So if you, I truly believe if you give freely, you will get it back in return. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's an energy exchange. So showing up for your workout or showing up for my class, your full whole self and giving all you can, not financially, but also just mentally and being present in that space and giving to us. That's, we feel that energy, you and I, and you said that earlier about the in-person meetings. We've, we've been without our, um, classes or our one-on-ones for a few months. And I absolutely agree. I feel that uh, energy loss there's just such an energy exchange and somebody showing up so fully and so presently to grow and to listen and to share and it's not not a one-way street at all correct 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 yes all of the things thank you so so much for spending time with me this morning i really really appreciate it thank you thank you for having me providing me with the opportunity and i hope everything works out for you um you know, I pray abundance and a lot of peace and health uh, going towards you, yourself individually, your family, and your business. All the same reflected back to you. Thank you so much, Christian. We'll talk soon, I'm sure. All right. All right. Bye.